Hi there, this is Brad with Asphalt Seal Coating Direct, m and Distribution. We're going to be covering the shaft seal replacement uh, instructions in this video. And this particular pump is the Banjo 2 inch cast iron stainless steel pump that we use in our Polyskid uh, seal coat spray systems and some of our portable systems too. So regardless of which system you have, as long as it's the cast iron Banjo pump, uh, this video will cover the procedure for replacing the entire shaft seal assembly. This here uh, pump came off of a seal coat system. You can see it's got a lot of uh, seal coat left on it. So the first thing we're going to do is disassemble this pump and we're going to clean it up really well and, and then we'll be going step by step on how to replace this seal. Before we get too far along, um, the parts that you're going to want to have on hand uh, to do this uh, seal replacement are going to be a, a piece of shipping strap. <clears throat> this is a strap that's normally used to hold material to pallets and this is the poly strap and you're going to want a piece of this probably 24 inches long and uh, we'll use that later on as a shim as, as I'll show you but have that have some of that on hand. Uh, the replacement seal uh, there's actually three versions of this. The one I'm going to be putting in is the heavy duty seal, which is the severe duty. And uh, that part number is 17035 SD. Uh, and the reason I like to use the severe duty is because it's a lot more tolerable to run in the pump dry if you happen to do that by mistake. And uh, also, it's more, uh, it's heavier for gravel and, and debris in your material that you pump and then a, a new housing gasket. You're going to want to get one of these. Sometimes you can get by without it just by using silicone to put it back together, but if you have to order a seal anyway, you might as well spend a couple of bucks and, and get a new gasket. That way you're, you know, you're, not, you're, you're going to assure yourself of, of no leaks and a good uh, reassembly. Okay, I've moved the pump of the motor up on a bench so you guys can see it really clearly. Uh, the first thing that we're going to have to do is remove the pump from the engine. And uh, to do that, there's four half inch bolts uh, that holds the rack onto the engine. You're going to want to remove these half inch bolts and then uh, the next step is going to be to remove this collar that holds the uh, pump impeller onto the <coughs> engine crankshaft. And you notice that uh, one of these bolts run, you know, they run opposite directions. There's a nut on this side, a bolt on this side, so make certain that whenever you put this back together that, that you assemble it the same way you took it apart. Uh, there's a keyway, as I'll show you later on, in this collar, and it's going to be extremely important that you put this keyway back uh, the correct way so that it aligns with the impeller in the slot. Okay, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this this entire pump and the rack away from the engine, split it. It's going to make it. It's going to make the uh, the process of cleaning the pump much easier too. And we're going to remove this collar and take it, uh, split it. It's in two parts. Take it completely apart and then we're going to be removing the entire assembly away where we have plenty of room to work on it. Alright, here's a better picture of the uh, of the collar that I just took off. <clears throat> this collar is used to go over the uh, impeller shaft which uh, has slots in it and the slot that I'm talking about is right here. And so when you reassemble this you're going to want to make sure that the keyed way in this collar goes back on top of that slot so that it locks the collar in place. Okay, that's that's extremely important. Okay, so uh, I've taken the collar off now and my next step is to remove these four uh, bolts that hold the uh, rack, the pump rack, to the engine. Since I made that uh, video on the Banjo cast iron pump, uh, Banjo and Hypro has kind of become one company as I understand it. So it's possible that you're going to get a Hypro pump now. And it really looks just like the Banjo, but there are some minor differences in how you install it. So when you get it, it's going to be like this package in the box. And we're going to go through a couple of steps. And it primarily just involves the coupling, how the pump actually couples to the motor. Um, as you recall, I was showing you guys the uh, coupling with the spline in it. Uh, that coupled the motor to the pump on, on the other configuration and this is going to be a little bit different. It's just as easy, it's not 
not complicated, but it is different, so I want to clarify the differences. Okay, your pump is going to be in a box and it's going to be bolted to a piece of wood. These brackets right here are to uh, mount the pump to the engine base so that uh, the pump has, you know, some more, uh, a more secure connection than just the bolts that go from the uh, back of the pump up to the back of the motor. This here actually bolts to the bottom of the pump and it bolts to the bottom of the motor which gives the uh, the pump a lot more support. Now in your pump box you're going to have a book that comes with it that kind of explains how to put things together and how to uh, a, a attach the pump to the motor but I want you to notice you know on page uh, four it talks about the old style of coupling and it doesn't explain the new style so that's what this video is for is to make sure the clear you have clarification on the new style of coupling um, it's not the style that you're looking at it's going to be the style that I'm going to show you in just a minute okay the coupling we're going to be using now and from now on is going to be a two-piece uh, hardened steel coupling that uh, is going to be easier to for you to install and you're not going to use the keyway with this so if your engine comes with a keyway uh, it looks like this in here does not, or yeah, this in here does have one in it. So we're going to remove this keyway because uh, you're not going to need it in this application. So this coupling is just a two-piece coupling with a couple of set screws in it. And uh, it's going to have to be taken apart and split. And then we're going to slide it right over the, uh, the, the pump uh, impeller shaft here, okay? So that whenever it tightens down, it'll, it'll pull these, it'll pull this, uh, collar down tight upon the engine shaft. All right, we've uh, put our coupling on our pump shaft and left it loose, but uh, we went ahead and started both, both of the screws, and now we're gonna set this pump and secure it up on this engine, okay? And again, you're not gonna use this, this key that uh, this pump, this engine was shipped with. You're gonna remove that. And we've slid the pump and uh, the engine together, and now we're just gonna tighten our, our coupling up nice and tight. Um, and that's all there is to this. Now, these rails I talked about are going to fit underneath the pump and the engine, one on each side, and that ties the engine to the pump. And then you're also going to, just like the old style, you're still going to install the bolts that hold it to the engine housing. And uh, with that little bit of change, that's all there is to it. They've just basically changed how the coupling and the motor was coupling together. Okay, we've got the bolts out, and now it's going to be a matter of just wiggling this pump um, until it slides off of the engine, and mine is loose now, so I'm going to go ahead and slide this pump off and get the engine out of the way, and then we're going to start tearing this pump apart. All right, now that we've got the pump away from the motor, uh, we can start taking the pump apart. First thing I'm going to want to do is take these six half-inch nuts off. There's, there's uh, actually three on one side and three on the other side. We're going to take that off and lift this entire assembly away from the housing, which uh, will give us access to our impeller and our shaft seal. Okay, I've just split the housing away from the rack, <clears throat> which is gonna expose my pump impeller, the rack, the pump impeller, and the housing. Now this here's the wear plate, and this is replaceable as a separate part. Um, this particular pump has a very close tolerance between the impeller face and the wear plate and if you pump uh, material in your seal coat like gravel or black beauty or something like that <clears throat> it's going to be important that you you know how to do this because this wear plate even though it's made out of stainless steel can wear down and the more it wears the less pump pressure you're going to have so the wear plate is replaceable as a separate part we sell them on the website and you can actually replace it just by pulling this pump apart and change you know removing these two screws and putting a new wear plate in uh, the impeller you should never have to replace. It's made out of cast iron, but uh, the seal, uh, depending on how much you use your pump and how much or what kind of material you pump through your pump, you may have to, you know, put a seal in it annually or, or even more. Um, we've got customers out there that have had them three or four years that never has had to replace the seal, but it's going to be really just up to how often you use it and what you pump through it. So the next, no, notice how rusty this is and dirty. This is going to be really common, and uh, I'm going to spend a lot of time cleaning mine up. Uh, 
as I'll show you because that's going to be a very important part of, of you putting this back together without any leaks. So I'm going to spend the next couple hours just scraping and cleaning and wiping this all clean and then we'll, we'll get back to uh, actually replacing the shaft seal in this pump and this gasket. This gasket here is bad so we're going to replace it too. Okay now we're going to remove our <clears throat> impeller from the rack and as you can see that exposes both parts of our seal. Uh, this is going to be our carbon section with our spring on it. <clears throat> this is going to be our ceramic, <clears throat> okay, which is uh, glued into the rack. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to pull this. Uh, you know, th this will pull right off. But we're going to remove this and discard it, and we're going to push this out and discard it. And we're going to clean up the impeller and the rack real well, uh, and get all the rust and the sealer and everything else off of them before we. Uh, start the reassembly process. If this uh, seal gives you a hard time coming off the shaft, just put, put a pair of pliers on this gently and turn it and just twist it until it uh, comes off. But you've got to get up over this edge, this edge right here with it. So just work at it until this is off and then clean this shaft up real well and clean up the impeller face. And then when it comes time to, to replace this uh, or to remove the ceramic, <clears throat> the easiest way to do that is to turn this rack over and uh, take your a screwdriver or something and, and stick it down through here and just push it out. It's just pressed in and it should pop out relatively easy so that you can clean up the the rack. I just used a screwdriver to, to go down behind the seal and push it out. It popped out very easy and, and this is what the ceramic part looks like. So uh, <clears throat> you'll be working on cleaning the surfaces of the seat where the ceramic goes where the new one will seat back down in there so the next step is we're going to clean this rack up real well okay we're done cleaning and whenever you're finished cleaning yours I hope yours is as clean as mine I soaked mine in diesel for a few hours and then wire brushed it real well um, you'll definitely want to make sure it's clean I also replaced I decided to go ahead and put a new uh, wear plate in here as easy as it is while I get this apart my other one was pretty wore has some pretty deep ridges in it and like I said earlier <clears throat> the more clearance that you have between your impeller face and your seal plate will be the less pressure that you achieve from your pump so you need a close tolerance uh, and that's when we put it back together and assemble it I'll show you how to set the tolerance but the closer the tolerance the better without it touching that's going to create the best pressure so if you need a wear plate now's a good time to do it um, also the the gasket that you'll need to put this back together with um, if you you probably tore your old gasket taking it apart so now would be a good time to replace that gasket so make sure you have on hand uh, that piece of shipping strap I talked about earlier a gasket and uh, you know a wear plate if you need it and of course your new shaft seal and uh, you'll also need some adhesive and I'll, I'll show you which kind of adhesive I like best whenever I start putting the seal back together but we are we're ready for the reassembly at this point all right, we've uh, got our new shafts here ready to go, and first thing we're going to do is put our spring on, and then this ceramic part, you want to try not to touch if you can keep from it, because the oil in your skin will actually, uh, could potentially create a leak uh, between this, the, uh, the carbon and the, and the ceramic, so try not to touch it if you can. Just grab it and just kind of pull it down over the shaft there a little bit. You've got to get over this, this uh, flange, all right, and then push it on down and, you know, to where it's... Uh, nice and tight on the shaft and straight and that'll take a little bit of work but it'll go down there and then the uh, the seat uh, you're going to want to uh, have your have your ceramic piece ready to go uh, and make sure again that you don't touch try not to touch the uh, you know the face of the seal <coughs> they ship you with a new seal a cardboard uh, cover <coughs> and what you should do is use that so that you don't touch that face. Whenever I replace a seal, I like to use a little bit of uh, industrial sealant 800. That's made by Scotch. Uh, it comes in little little tubes too, and most hardware stores or uh, automotive stores have this, but you're gonna wanna put a, a nice thin coat down in the base where the seal is gonna be pressed into, and then uh, you'll press, press the seal into it. To press, to press the seal in straight, what I like to do is take a piece, I've made my own, my own uh, installation tool here. This is just a piece of inch and a quarter uh, PVC pipe. 
and I've ground down the end of it a little bit so that it fits into an inch and an eighth opening. That way it, it's uh, nice and snug in there. This is going to be used to push the, the seal face so you don't have to push on the seal because you're, you could actually break the ceramic if you start pushing on the seal and you get it kind of cockeyed in there. So I use this to press it in nice and straight and, and give it a twist. So have yourself a piece of pipe ready, either either an inch and eighth uh, or take a piece of inch and a quarter PVC and kind of grind it down just a little bit to where it easily fits inside the the uh, the, the you know the base socket there where the seal is going to be mounted into. Okay, you can see I've got my carbon part of my seal uh, position so that it's all the way down against the uh, the impeller. This is going to take a little work, okay? You twist it back and forth. Uh, if you have to put pliers on it, put pliers on the back side, not the front side. And if this carbon, uh, this carbon actually can, will pull out on you a little bit, you can remove it. If it does, that's fine. Just push it back in when you're done. But just make sure that, you know, you'll have a little bit of slap here in your spring, but your seal should be all the way down on the shaft. And this shaft, by the way, will unscrew from the impeller, and if it does, just screw it back in. It's, it's no big deal. There's no reason for you to remove this shaft from the, from the impeller unless you want to remove it and wire brush it or something like that and put it back. But uh, normally you wouldn't have to, to remove it from the impeller. But to make sure that your this part of your seal is all the way down as far as it can go on the shaft. Uh, and then <clears throat> I've also put a little bit of glue, as you can see, inside the base where I'm going to put my seal now. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop this, this shaft seal down in here. And I'll show you that uh, installation here just coming up next. Okay, <clears throat> I've driven down the, the uh, ceramic part of the seal into the, into the rack. And when you get done, it should be flush, okay? And it should be straight. Uh, make certain, absolutely certain, that the seal is flush all the way down into the housing and it's not cockeyed. Uh, this is where most guys make their mistake. They don't get the seal in correctly and it's a little bit cockeyed and it leaks when they're done and they've wasted the money on their seal. Another way of <coughs> knowing for sure is to turn it over and look at the back side of it and make sure that it's seated well. Uh, where I glued it, okay? This is a critical step in the replacement of your seal, so spend a little extra time here, and this is gonna take some effort because uh, this tool I've made will go down, you know, it's the right size, but you can hit it with the palm of your hand. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use a hammer on it by any means, but, but you can press it and tap it with this pipe and, and put some pressure on it and just work that seal down to where it's nice and flat and straight and completely seated into the rack, and then uh, you're going to want to let that glue dry for several hours at minimum, okay, probably overnight after you put this thing back together. The next thing we're going to do is slide the impeller and the seal back into the rack, but I wanted to show you one thing. If this, if your uh, carbon seal is, is mounted correctly onto your impeller shaft, uh, you ought to be able to press it back and forth, <clears throat> like what you're seeing here, and have a little bit of pressure on the spring, because when this impeller is mounted back in the rack, this spring is what's going to keep pressure uh, between your carbon seal and your ceramic seal. So make sure that your, your seal is free up and down this shaft. If not, take some sand cloth and clean this shaft up real well. Okay, and, and test test this motion and make sure that you've got make sure you've got a good good smooth move on this shaft back and forth. Uh, before you slide it back together. And again, once we put the impeller back into the rack, you want to make sure that you can press that impeller and that spring is pushing it back up. Okay, make sure that that motion, make sure that thing is free and clear and you've got a little bit of spring in it uh, so that it pushes the two parts of the seal together. Okay, and that spring holds them together. And here's where we're going to use this, this nylon strap. <clears throat> um, this is the exact thickness that you need for the uh, shimming the uh, the distance between the wear plate and uh, the impeller. So I want you to take this piece of strap that we're, that you went and got wherever you got it at, probably some lumber yard, and I want you to stick it in the top of the pump and come down and uh, to where it's laying on top of the wear plate right here. And as you put this uh, assembly here back on top of it, I want you have to make sure that that strap is between the face of the impeller and the wear plate. Okay, that's going to give you the proper clearance between those two components. And now that we've dropped it back down, we're going to put our bolts, our, our washers first, and then our nuts back on top of <coughs> of the rack to to uh, secure the rack to the pump housing. And then we'll uh, the next step is we're going to put this collar. And see, I, I was just noticing the uh, gap I was talking about earlier. Here's this gap that this collar is going to be. Uh, 
is going to be riding on in a little bit. So I want you to make certain that whenever you put it back together that this collar uh, key is in this groove in this on your uh, impeller shaft. Okay, we've put our <clears throat> rack back on our pump and uh, we're getting ready to mount this pump back onto the engine. Be sure that you don't remove this strap until we actually install this coupling back onto the engine shaft, okay? This here is, is, is nice and snug in there right now and it's uh, meant to, like I said, it's meant to, to shim up or shim those two components away from each other. So if we was to pull it out now, this the uh, impeller shaft would slide back and then you're going to be rubbing your impeller against your wear plate. And so we don't want that. So leave this strap in place until we make the final assembly and connect this uh, impeller uh, shaft to the engine shaft and then we clamp it with the couple or with the uh, two-piece clamp. All right, <clears throat> we are now sliding our pump back on the engine shaft. And about the last critical step that I really want you guys to be paying attention to is I talked earlier about the slot in your <clears throat> impeller uh, shaft. Okay, that's here. When you slide this back onto your engine shaft, make sure that it slides onto the keyway in your engine shaft. This is extremely important. Okay, this is what holds it all together. So um, I'm going to slide that up there and then I'm going to put that collar on there. But just make sure that this, this is all aligned as you slide this together. And as you can see, we're we're back on the shaft properly, and now it's it's time to put our <clears throat> our collar back together. And this collar is actually what's going to secure both of these shafts together to where they don't pull apart. Okay. And once we get uh, this collar back on, then uh, it's okay to pull this uh, pull the strap out. Okay, the shim out. So let's go ahead and put this collar back on to secure these two shafts together. Okay, I've got my collar back on. As I said earlier, make sure that you put um, change the directions on these bolts. Put one in from one direction and the other other in from the other direction. Tighten them up nice and tight and evenly. Okay, uh, it's extremely important that this collar goes down nice and flug, flush. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put these four uh, rack bolts back into the uh, to the rack that secures the rack to the engine. All right, we're down to the last step now. We're going to take and we're going to uh, pull the strap out. Okay, and if you've done it correctly, uh, you ought to be able to pull your engine and uh, you don't want your impeller rubbing on the wear plate, like I said. So, see, I'm, I'm pulling right now and you don't, you know, it pulls easily. So, if you do pull it and it, uh, and it's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of resistance and you, and you feel that impeller and that wear plate rubbing, uh, don't go any further. You need to take it apart and reshim it and do it again. Sometimes you can loosen everything up, including the, the uh, bolts that, that hold the rack onto the pump and the collar and kind of wiggle things and, and tighten everything back up uh, evenly and sometimes that will take care of the rub and if not you're like I said you're gonna have to take it apart and reshim it again and do it again but make sure that absolutely that you do not uh, run it dry after you put the seal in it and make sure that you don't have any rub in it whenever you pull the engine uh, recoil starter okay because uh, it's gonna make it extremely hard to, to start and then on top of that it's it's going to wear your wear plate out very, very quickly. So uh, it's better to, to make sure that these, you know, these kind of things are, are solved right now before you plumb this thing back up and and hook it all back up, and then find out that you got to tear it back apart again off your off your sealing seal seal coat system. So that's it. Okay, it's not a big thing. This should take you uh, off and on. You know, if you do it in pieces and you let the sealer dry and things like that, you'll probably spend an hour to two hours on this from front to front to back and uh, it's not very hard to do but the little things that I showed you are going to save you a lot of time down the road.